Hello, everybody. All right, we're live. Thanks for joining everybody on Twitch. Um, they cannot hear me right now. We're going to be watching Lucas go over this paper, Scalable Training of Artificial Neural Networks with Adaptive Sparse Connectivity Inspired by Network Science. I might just not. Is someone going to want me to project the paper? It's going to be a kind of a pain since this webcam is also pointing at the board. Yeah. So I just won't project the paper unless someone wants me to. I don't think there's figures in there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean it doesn't have to be. There are not many things. It doesn't have to be Twitch. Matt's handling that. He's, he's Matt's doing the Twitch part of it. Yeah. The only the only thing I really need is the is Marcus's camera at the, on the whiteboard. Uh, I, I mean, for us in the room, if, if we want this up here. Right. So I have that one for the report. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I won't have the other one. So they're just talking about, Lucas. they're projecting this paper yeah. locally. Well, I posted one yesterday. So in the room. Oh, actually, it's about the one I posted yesterday. The other ones are just background. Oh, I posted on the slide. Okay. Uh, the other it's, a, it's called Deconstructing Lottery Tickets. Uh, yeah, no. There's another paper. He's okay, uh, I think we can start with the link. Here it is. Okay. So Matt's got everything covered. So, I, I, I did not read the paper. I'm not going to be as uh, tuned in as I usually am. Oh, yeah? There's another paper reference from uh, Lucas. So it, uh, I'll just go over uh, these few papers before we get to that. So. There's actually a few dots in that paper, the okay, motivation why uh, I proposed that paper. And this is something I've been discussing so far since I got here, and uh, I actually recommend this paper. So I will build up to that. So, what we've been doing in neural networks is regular pruning. And the goal of pruning is usually to make a network smaller, to fit in smaller devices, so it's faster to do inference, so it could fit like an smartphone. And you can also improve accuracy by fine tuning the smaller net networks. So they have these two main goals of pruning. But pruning has been traditionally done uh, keeping less connections or less layers. Depends if it's structured or unstructured pruning. So I could like prune by removing a few connections. But I would usually keep the same weight. So what we thought is that uh, the final weights we got to using the, the dense network are the weights that are optimal for learning. So you keep the same weights and you just prune a few connections. So that's traditional. So this year, two papers came up in iClear. I think Subtai watched them. Yeah. Uh, one is called Rethinking the Value of Network Pruning, which is uh, really inter interesting. He works with uh, structured pruning. So structured pruning is, instead of cutting down new connections and making it more sparse, he cuts down like an entire filter usually, or maybe an entire layer. So it's very similar to what we call a NAD, it's a network architecture research. So what it does is it trains a full network and then he evaluates, uh, do I need this entire network? So what can I cut down and still get the same results or even better results? So this is structured pruning. And the difference in this paper is that he shows that if he applies structured pruning, he can get the same network, reset all the weights to random variables and train again, and he's gonna get even higher accuracy than the initial network. So uh, the difference here is the reset weight. So what he shows is I don't need the final weight. I can reset the weight. All I need is that final architecture. So it's very similar to a, a neural uh, network architecture search. Yeah, so what's the difference? Between uh, pruning and... Nice, nice. Well, 
just the, the approach you take, right? The network architecture search you usually start from small and then you start to right. add more stuff. In this case, I think it this is the first network, paper he's talking about. Network and then he proves from so, so it's like, a, yeah, it's backwards. Yeah. So that's what we did. Is there any uh, sort of uh, meta understanding of why that works? Uh, yeah. So I've got to. Okay. Uh, I read that. So this other paper it's called a lottery ticket hypothesis, which came right with that paper and one, I think, the best paper in ICLIA. And what these guys are doing, they're working with unstructured pruning, which is from a paper from 2015, I think from Hui, I'm not sure. And what he does is like he's sparsing the network. So after he finished training, he'll just see which connections he doesn't need and he'll just cut them up. So that will effectively make the network more sparse. And the way he cuts them down is by magnitude. So he gets the, the ones with uh, weights closest to zero and then remove them and just keep the ones with higher space. So the ones with weights close to zero are not relevant. So how is it can. different than the first example? Than the, this one? No, this one when you first started, isn't that? Oh, okay, so far it's the same. It's oh, so far it's the same. Okay. But the difference is that he also, similar to this, he also shows that you don't need to define a weight. So you can reset the initial values. Uh, and you can have an even better accuracy than you had before. By training the new um, the new uh, sparse network. Yeah, by training the new sparse network. So I that's thought the even better part was a little bit. Yeah, it's it's, it's at least on par. At least it's on, on par. par. Yeah. But there is like a, li a small oh, little. Well, that's uh, a big difference. I mean, I mean, one if it's on par, it's like okay, it didn't really achieve much. I mean, you achieved the initial benefits of uh, cutting back, but the, what was surprising is that when you retrain it in this. Then it works better. But, but it's a little bit better, like mm, I it, think that, that's a suspect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It shows that in some points the difference is statistically significant, but it's like a little bit better. Yeah. But still like I mean you can even imagine a little bit better. It's sort of like, hey, these were kind of noisy things to begin with, and so I just removed the little noisy things yeah. it's a little bit better. When you said it was better, I was like, wow, that, that's why I was asking what's the what's the meta theory behind that? Because that seems like it's just a that's a very, I was thinking like, oh, it's twice as good or something. That's amazing. How did that happen? But no, okay. It's even not obvious that it would get to even the same accuracy if you do this. Okay. Uh, because if you, even though they're pruning it and resetting it to the initial values, during training, the gradients at each neuron is going to be different because yeah. of different connectivity. So it's not clear that it should actually get to even the same accuracy. Well, it wasn't clear that it wouldn't. I, I just, would you, I, I would have gotten inside, you said, Got better. I'm like, wow, that's a yeah, lot yeah, yeah. So you're saying maybe not? Yeah, I think the got better part is like in some cases, yeah, some cases, no. I think it was a little more. Okay. I don't yeah. think you can maybe, maybe say it's the, stronger, stronger. the stronger claim would be that it, it's not inherently worse. Yeah, 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 that would be the strong claim. But, but they show some empirical evidence that at some point, it's not this significant better, but yeah, okay. it's not like. Yeah, right. It's not like, like wow, also yeah. gets 30% better performance. But you, you have a smaller network, yeah. and it can perform at least as you got. So. Yeah. And now there is this new paper that just came up. So I want to point out one more thing. Yeah. For all of these three things that you presented so far, in order to get the benefit, you have to train a complete full dense network yeah. and mm -hmm. then prove that. Yeah. So yeah. the training process is actually much worse. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's okay, yeah. just standard. But it's much longer because you have to, well, if you just prune, it's it's. You know, you train the whole thing and you prune it and you're, then you're I mean, it can be, none of these are worse than it was before because you, before you had to No, they are it. because in these other two, you train it, you prune it, and you retrain oh, it. Oh, have to retrain it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And okay. the lottery ticket sometimes multiple passes. All right. So okay. it's, I see. I see. Okay. The training is actually much worse in these cases. Yeah. And I want to contrast that with. Because at least you have to do it twice. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, but what these are showing is that. A lot of the learning is going on not on the weights itself, because <laughs> here you can reset the weights to random variables, and here you can reset the initial value. And, and it's still learning better. So, what's the difference between random and initial? What was the, initial uh, the initial values, the, the initial values when the first network was trained. Oh, so, okay. it presents to the same oh, way. Oh, it's, it's, it's the initial random. Initial random values. And here it's just any new random values, which resets the way oh. to any new random values. So when the net when the dense network's first initialized, it has like a set of yeah, weights. It's, it's, it's not clear to me that that's important, but anyway. Yeah. But the thing it's showing is that there is a lot of uh, learning going on, not just on the weights, but on the actual connections. So yeah. uh, which connections were, were formed by the net by the network. And this new paper uh, emphasized that, which I think is really interesting. It's called a super mask. And what they show is three things actually. So 
first they, they investigate why do you cut off the weights by magnitude makes a difference. And what they're showing is that uh, if you actually, they are actually cutting down the weights which were already going towards zero. So if you, instead of cutting the weights by magnitude, but if you cut the weights by, by, a, by a delta, by how much they change during training. So if you keep the weights which increase more, and remove the weights which were decreasing more, it's even better than cutting by magnitude. So what's really important here, what this guy is doing is actually removing the weights which were gonna be removed anyway. So if you kept on training, those weights were going to be pushed to zero. So they're trending down, the delta, the delta yeah. negative. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were already trending down. So what you're doing here is okay. The, the delta was do you think you're going to zero? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So what 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 it's actually doing is uh, those weights were already going to zero, just detects before and cuts them down, so I don't need them anymore. And so it also does the does the same thing. So it does uh, unscripted pruning. And what it shows, which is different from this one, is that you don't even need the initial values. You can actually raise that to a constant value. And the only important thing is that you keep the same sign. So as long as the sign is the same, you can reset these initial weights after you apply this mask. You can reset these initial weights to any constant, which is the same sign of the weight. I mean, they all have the same value or is some- Yeah, the same value. You can I give them all plus one, minus one. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you use plus or minus one. Probably like But it says any value, including- Yeah. But, but you say it has to, you have to preserve the sign. It has to preserve the sign. No, so, plus or minus something. yeah, if it was a negative, it would be like well, minus one. If it's a positive, then it's some um, yeah. plus one. And what's more impressive about this paper is what if you can I ask the question about these numbers? Mm -hmm. uh, does the during training does the sign change on these guys? Well, uh, they, they might. Yeah, they, they might. Yeah. yeah. So these are not inherently positive, negative synapses. Brain. Oh, yes. Did you keep the sign that it was during initialization? Yeah, the sign okay. that Thank was you for during initialization. Well, not, not the sign after training. It was uh, after the first Probably see my overlays. Uh, I, I, actually, actually, uh, just let me correct. So, the, the mask they're using here, they're not uh, keeping the weights which change sign, because they're removing the they're removing the weights which uh, went towards zero. So, if it was negative, let's say negative ten, uh -huh. and in the final round was like negative one, it went towards zero. So this is the kind of way that's going to be removed. Or if it was uh, 10 and then went towards one, it would be removed. But if it was 10 and went towards positive uh, negative two, and then you're saying it's continuing, it's moving, it's yeah, keeping it going. It past zero. Yeah, if it makes past zero, you're on your, you're on the increase. When does the cutoff happen? And how far through training? That's a, that's a good question. I, I don't know. But, but the general idea is that but you say generally whatever <laughs> sign it had during initialization is likely to have the same sign yeah. at the end. Let's say yeah, they would have some sign. And otherwise, so otherwise they would be cut off the, at the mask. It depends, yeah, the depends on some of the details of how they do it. And what I, what I find really interesting is that, okay, so you train this entire <laughs> network, and then you decide which connections I don't need, so I don't need any of these connections. And you have a mask, right? And you can apply this mask to a new network, and these new networks, you randomly initialize all the weights to a constant, no, not randomly initialize, but you initialize all the weights to a constant with the same sign as the original. <laughs> and without any training at all, it can achieve 86% accuracy on the index. No training, you just use it for inference and it gets up to 86% accuracy on the index. And then this has 10 classes, so. What was the, what was the original network trained on? So if it's random. Uh, trained on MNIST. On MNIST. So what? So you're saying, what you're saying is that by preserving the sign and certain of the connections, I get the structure of the network now has good, meet some, some level of performance. Yeah, without any training. Without, without any training. training. So, so, so the, some of the knowledge of what the training is in the, what's well, kind of like what we do, right? It's yeah. like, it's, 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 the, the, <laughs> it's the connect on yeah. that. But so, so I think that the big point here is that a lot of the learning is going on on deciding which connections not, not yeah. exactly. Wait, so, yeah. so it raises some questions like, do we really need 16 bits of floating point numbers? Or, uh, I mean, do we really need all those values of the dense yeah. network? Yeah. Can you use sparse networks yeah. or binary networks? So it raises some questions. Well, we yeah. know the answer to that question. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, the question is, is this 86% impressive or not? Well, uh, oh, okay, on Cypher is 41. Yeah, okay. Cypher 10? Cypher 10, yeah. What is, what's a, what's a non-trained network, a traditional network, and what is the final training? Well, a random network would achieve 10% because it's 10 classes. 
So okay. like uh, just initialize a random net network ten percent, and I train one on Cypher ten. It's a uh, nine to two. So now you're at so basically you get forty one percent. You go from just the from the connection, uh, and then this is ninety nine. Forty one point four to forty one. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's actually like a, a big difference just from it. Yeah, it's not competitive in the sense, but it's it's no. the same. There's some some knowledge in the structure of it. Yeah, there's some knowledge in the structure. So this brings us to our paper. So the, the household dance. So yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes Luis can correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, in household dance, so we have. Now he's talking about our paper. <laughs> um, how could we be so dense? I don't know how you call this paper. Yeah. Saying, how can we be so dense? Right? Yeah. Yeah, I just tried okay. to make it like <laughs> <laughs> make it short. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how so dense. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so in the house of dance paper, we have uh, fixed initial connections. So they randomly decide they drop on uniform random distribution, but they're fixed connections. The, the connections which begin uh, set to zero, they'll be set to zero during the whole frame. And we also have boosting, which helps the low weight connection to be selected in the, the, the key winners layer. And then this helps maintain a more stable distribution of weights. So we're actually, what we're doing in House of Dance is that the connections are not changing at, at all. So we're not like exploring the space of possible connections. That's one thing. And the other thing is that we're actually helping the low weight connections to remain alive because boosting is, is helping keep this uh, stability. So uh, another option to be very aggressive. But, on but this. Wait, remind me though, where's where the where this sparsity coming from? That we're keeping all the connections. No, but uh, in no, the no, initialization. We have a sparse set of connections. Initially, or you yeah, go, initially, oh, yeah. You start just like a potential. Thing. I forgot that. I thought, uh, okay, so we're starting with a uh, sort of a, uh, yeah, okay. Well, oh, yeah. not to do convolution. Yeah, even sometimes, usually, quite often, it's a convolution structure. And we not all always, but it's a small, it's small. So we just we are just starting so with random sparsity. Yeah, but that's sparsity. We start that uh, specific uh, uh, connection. They are kept throughout all frame. What changes are yeah, the way, yeah, but yeah, we're yeah. not changing the code. But we're not, we're not pruning in some sense. We no. are pre pruning. Or yeah, we are like pre pruning. Well, although Lewis is also doing pruning. pruning. Yeah, you can do pruning after that too. Mm. Um, I, thought, to, I thought I remember you doing pruning. Yeah. Just in, in a, when they prune, what percent, how big is it compared to the original network? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, and these numbers are important. And the super mass. In the lottery tickets, about 10%. And the super mask, uh, I'm not so sure. So all these guys basically have to transpose now, and then they're coming out figuring out how to do less. Yeah. They're just starting off the less. Yeah. Yeah. And I think neither are the right. I don't think either are right. Yeah, yeah it's pre print uh, in, in our recent yeah, paper. How could it be so dense? He's about talking about a different method. Yeah, pruning after the fact. But we can have I about think it's continuously of, pruned. 30%. 30% pruning, yeah. Um, and, and that seems to work well. Uh, the, 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 the amount of connection. The, the connection, yeah. So they're getting sparser in yeah. our theory. I think we can do better than both. Mm -hmm. Both of those techniques, if we actually add and drop connections on the fly, uh -huh. and we should be able to get by maybe with less than ten percent, yeah. definitely less than thirty percent. Yeah, what, what I think. Oh, so this would be yeah. this would sort of be adding sort of uh, our sort of um, uh, reconnectivity scheme to um, uh, potential synapse scheme to exactly. Yeah. Synapse. Yeah. So some sort of you know structural plasticity. And during the training, training. Yeah, right. but they don't have that. No, they do full training, that. then pruning, and then training. Yeah. It's just one of the reasons I thought this paper was. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's the introduction. Yeah, I think this is all really good background uh, for that. Yeah, yeah that's uh, one other thing I'd like to add. Uh, we also have boosting. And the thing is, if you're actively pruning the connections, we might need to allow the connections to network decay. And I don't know how this is going to play with boosting because boosting is like helping the weak ones. Remain alive that's it, somehow, and maybe we just need them to die. Yeah, but it's important that the boosting is not helping the small weights to remain. Yeah, that's it's right. remaining. Yeah. It's it's uh, allowing the small frequent units, units yeah. to be frequent. So it may just mean yeah. increasing the large weights. That's enough too. Yeah, it doesn't have to be uh, focused on the small. But but if the infrequent units they participate in the process, they will also be uh, changed in the back propagation process. So you are you are helping them. Yeah, like participate in the training process, and so they will get selected more, and by yeah. the end, selected more. 
the, the rates will change more. Exactly. So, so it's like the, it, it, it helps keep the stability of the. Yeah, but I think it's fundamentally a different type of. Uh, as I was going to agree with in boosting the unit activity is not. It's very, very different from boosting the, the or connection. I agree that the side effect of increasing some of really small ways. But, right. but only because. But only it doesn't because, have to. Right. But, but only because it was being now being useful because that that cell, that unit is now doing something where before it wasn't doing anything. So the point is you're trying to elevate a unit from like being kind of just hanging around doing nothing. And now all of a sudden it's got some purpose in life and it's doing something and therefore the connection is only valuable. I think that naturally follows from that, but I don't think that's a problem. It seems like you was trying to, the whole idea of boosting was to make sure you're, you're using the resources. In the brain it was like, okay, we got these cells. They're not really increasing and decreasing in number. We need to take advantage of all of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the connections can come and go all they want. Um, anyway, I, let's what, just see how it works. Out here. Right? After right, if you're some sort of epsilon from zero anyway, right? It didn't have this sparsification. If we do, we'll like lock in to zero those weights that are close to zero intermittently. Uh, in in during, during. what house events? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, in general, we're doing our sparseness. Uh, we're just using standard SGD on them, uh, but we do have a weight decay. So there is, you know, the weights will naturally tend towards zero. But you don't, you don't, you don't lock into zero. I think we don't lock. No, it. Okay. Yeah. 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 If we don't lock. Uh, so in the paper we have not. Lewis separately has done experiments with pruning as well, um, and it shows that we can actually. We can do it from the lock. So it'd be nice to put in something like what you're saying. That would be a concern right now that that perhaps this pruning is producing these small weights and that we're Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say there's a difference between a weight of zero and a connection that's missing. Because uh, you freeze, right? When you, when you actually prune the connection, I could freeze the weight to zero. And the other way around, you just set to zero, but the weight is not frozen, right? Yeah, exactly. But we, we freeze it to zero. Yeah, you freeze it. Yeah. Because uh, if you just set it to zero and don't do anything else over training, it'll become. Yeah, bad. you actually. Isn't that what you just, generally just said? I think I but Jeremy just said, oh, aren't we locking the voice to zero? And you said, no. Oh, I used the wrong word, by the way. I was thinking about this pruning technique of taking the small weights and zero right now. No, but we are locking to zero just in the beginning, just when we start the network, then we lock and freeze. But if weight decays, sparse them to zero, you're not locked to zero. They can yeah. skip. Oh, so you think yeah. locking to zero in the initial sparse structure? Yeah. Oh, that's the same as saying there's no connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Right. That's the same. But weight decay will not cut the connection. We're not from because mm -hmm. even if it's set to zero, it's not locked. And so this brings up to the paper we had today. No, <laughs> 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 oh, that he decided to get a background, which I think is very possible. Ah, yeah, yeah. Did they do any kind of reporting on how similar the weights end up after the next pass? Because you're, you're putting all these connections away. Mm. So in some cases, you're training it. Mm. Yeah. At the end? Consistent? Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if they report that. I think we would expect the sign to be the same, at least since the sign is so important. But I don't know if weights being the same is actually really important. But I would yeah, expect the sign. The ideal weights that kind of the training in the second pass, the right? In the prune yeah. network, it would be interesting to see. But I don't think they report that. No. So, so in this paper over here, the um, scalable screening of special neural networks to adapt to sparse connectivity. So now we're finally get to the actual paper. Uh, the initial line that kind of. It was all background. A network, so I'll just draw it like this. Draw it fully connected. So these networks is already sparse by design. So it's, they randomly select from. Uh, That's like ours. That's like ours. In like ours. We're starting with a, a sparse connectivity. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's already. Uh, no, let me draw now. So they randomly initialize, it's very similar to what we do, but we do a uniform random distribution in the layer. And what they do is they I think this is a good use a graph uh, random graph. It's basically the same. The same. They're just sampling from the distribution of graphs, so it's actually basically the same. It's the same thing, just more fancy name. Yeah. <laughs> but but what, it, what is different in what they are doing is that at each epoch, they would select 30%, which I think it's like very aggressive. Of the connections with smallest weights, they will kill those connections, and they will randomly restart somewhere else on the graph. So if I kill two connections, I start two connections. I mean, oh, so they add some more back in random. Yeah, yeah. So they always have a 
fixed percentage, but they're constantly dropping and growing new ones. So at every epoch, they're dropping 30%, the smallest rate, and growing. Well, you know, it occurred to me earlier that, that in our model, it, that that would be something you would do. You would you would grow new connections, but we don't do them randomly. We would do them uh, based on activity. Based on, on the, you know, the learning act, and the brain will do that. So yeah. the brain's constantly growing new connections, and constantly dropping old ones, but not randomly forming. Yeah, so this is exactly what I wanted to try out. I think it's a nice. Yeah, but they're, they're not doing it randomly. Like they're dropping the 30% leaf. Uh, no, it's not the dropping that's random. The question is oh, adding. Oh, the adding is yeah. random, yeah. yeah. No, the, the adding should not be random. The brain doesn't add random. Uh, the brain yeah. adds, hey, uh, these don't seem to be correlated. That's, that's, that's true. <clears throat> the problem would be like, yeah. Seems like a good avenue yeah. Yeah. to invest in. I think there's some, a lot of interesting strategies you can do there. So well, even, like, when I do more bookkeeping, those connections, they don't have right now. Yeah. The other thing you can do, detail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going to grow. Well, well, that's we have that problem in, in our brain models, right? In the sense that we have to we have to keep track of. Yeah. Um, the, there's that permanence idea, which you know, we're, we're sort of like, well, you you try to there's a correlation right now between these this input pattern, and you say, well, let's, let's make a connection for that. Uh, but if that's not reinforced. Again, yeah, recently, in, in the near future, we get we get it. You know, it's like it's a test. It's like okay, maybe this was useful because these two things correlated at the same time. So maybe it wasn't. So we have to we have to sort of give it a, a shot, and if it doesn't get reinforced, then we start to go away. Does, does boosting sort of do this a little bit? Because we're already trying to keep certain sparsity of activity, and so boosting is going to activate nodes that have been active for a while. It's doing it a little bit, but it's doing it within the initial sparse mass that we set, right? So it's not changing those things. Yeah. So these, these guys are actually changing. The so a wider potential pool. Yeah, more exactly. Boosting, it's still I mean, a full pool. Yeah, yeah. Still exists. It's like how big a potential pool do we need? <laughs> it goes back to an SD card. Right, and then I think what Lewis was saying is then you, you, you have to keep track of the permanence of these so, connections. Yes, these connections. Um, you know, we have a mask right now. Uh, we could keep track of a similar thing where, well, the, you know, what's the like? Well, should I, be which other one should be? Oh, well, we have to update that masking that we have. But these guys also had to keep track of the, the one they were doing the delta, right? Wasn't that like a... Yeah, but they only have to see the initial data, right? Oh, like they got the delta. Yeah, right. so I'm saying computational is going to be more intense than... Okay. Yeah, but then, because they're not doing continuous learning, they either run through the whole thing, yeah. and then they look at the delta, yeah. and then they yeah. run the whole thing again. But, but I think this sort of thing yeah. is much better with continuous learning. Yeah. You know, you can just continuously drop it out. So this is getting closer to sort of brain-like uh, yeah. connectivity yeah. changes. And they actually, in their paper, they talk a lot about there, it's it's very brain inspired this paper. Oh, so the same the same reasons we think it's brain inspired, like they're talking about connectivity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are these neuroscience people? Or are they... No, but they, they work specifically on sparsity in neural network. This group five, I'm hoping it works on yeah. specific. No, it's just the idea of knowing about how synapses grow and don't grow. It's they are mathematics and computer science. Yeah, and let's think. So what happened in this network? Uh, so what, what it's happened a here husband is and wife couple. using this approach, you can have uh, a sparse network with about, I think it's even 5% of what we had in a dense connection. And you can get the same results with 5% of the connection. Are, so, they, are they exhibiting any sort of the uh, benefits of, um, of noise that we talked about? No, they don't talk, they about, don't talk about that. They don't test it, so it might be there. But I don't know, because they're not doing the pooling. And then I think. The big thing about the household dance that makes it uh, more robust is mm -hmm. the special pooling layer, the king winners. So here they're not doing anything. Uh, yeah, they're not doing anything. So I don't know if it's going to be more robust tonight. I guess I'm lost, uh, I'm lost on that idea. So, um, so they don't have sparse activity here. They just have sparse. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, interesting. So they don't have any yeah. inhibition mm -hmm. on the activity. Mm -hmm. so. okay. the, the, the gain here is what they show they're is that like okay, I only need 5% of the computing power. We have the same results. Got it. That's that's the yeah. And they actually got a little better. Uh, the accuracy is a little bit better, but it's a little bit better, like here, just yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, almost nothing. What are the true and the very negative weights that have negative negative weights? Also, no, they they prune the closest to zero, smallest positive and the largest negative. So closest to zero. Yeah. No, I'm not reading. From oh, okay. The largest negative. Largest negative is the one closest to zero. No, it's actually, I think, oh, oh no, it depends what you mean. Yeah, it's the yeah. largest, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the negative. 
But like it was from like this. That's a weird way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I also when I read it, I think, what largest magazine? But then I can't do it. Makes sense. So they they from like this close to zero, and they'll keep the ones which are farther from zero. So yeah, that's the paper and the tweet. I mean, there's not not a lot to talk about the paper. So it's a lot of experiments. There is no theory at all, which. I think it was a bit disappointed. I was expecting a little bit of stuff. You mean like, hey, we tried this and it worked, as opposed to what was I like, thinking why it should work? Or yeah, like there was a lot of uh, empirical analysis, like experiments. And I was expecting a little theory, like testing the boundaries oh, and, and, and then trying to explain why, like in mathematical, mathematical proof. So, a couple of tweaks you could imagine here. One is what we already talked about, we could add based on the activity. Mm -hmm. um, another thing here is they're not, if, if they, drop a connection from this unit, they could replace it by a connection to another unit. Mm. So the number of connections in a unit could vary quite mm. dramatically. It's not keeping it constant at all. Uh, so you could imagine trying to keep that more constant. At least the number of connections per unit. Sure. Yeah, something like the, it's a little bit like the boosting. So in our case, and so in this case, they have the same number of units and you just reduce in the number of connections. Yeah. When we do the boosting or the spatial cooler equivalent, we uh, we have a sparse activation of units. And so if I look at the computational time or the computational power, does do we take advantage of that? Uh, do we take advantage of the sparse activation or do we still have to go through every unit even though they're not all being active at that point in time? So the support for sparse matrices in, in these frameworks is not good enough to Take advantage of that well, what I was coming at is like, oh, they get down to five percent uh, pretty big reduction. Um, if we only got down to ten percent, but we had, you know, only twenty percent of the yeah, unit, it should be a lot less. Should, it, would, it, would that really help us yeah. in that regard? I think so it would be sort of the combination of those two. But you saying we can't test that now because of the because of the tools because the these sparse multiplications and those frameworks. Yeah, they they only work if they're the non sparse is in blocks, in dense blocks. So you're saying that, that just the way they're set up today, yeah. is that something that can be rectified yeah. readily, or is it like, no, it's fun? Um, problem? To, with our kind of sparsity, it's not a good fit for GPUs. Uh -huh. So basically, the deep learning community does not do that. Uh -huh. They don't even consider that. And I've seen uh -huh. papers where they say, oh, yeah, you could prune this way, but it won't fit the GPU, so we're not even going to try it. Um, and then they so that, that makes it a little bit harder for us because it, some of the advantage comes from that. I mean, right now we've been trying to like sneak into their bed and say, we're going to do exactly what you're doing, we're going to make it better. Yeah. And now all of a sudden say, well, the next thing we're going to do, you know, you guys can't do, you know, um, or it's not so easy to do, or we, now all of a sudden we're not able to run the benchmarks the same way they run the benchmarks or something like that. Yeah. So right now we, you know, we are not taking advantage of the computational efficiencies that we okay. could. But we're saying there, so I've de-emphasized that piece in the papers. It's more about the robustness problem. Yeah. Uh, but once you start adding and dropping rates, it should help with continuous learning too. So even if computationally you're not getting benefits, you still get these other benefits. Yeah. Yeah, but, but ultimately, but, but I, you I, might I, be competing against other architectures, which uh, may be achieving similar results. I don't know. Could be. Yeah. But uh, you know, that, and that gets to. You know, you could imagine optimizing it at FPGA. Yeah. Stuff, so. yeah. You know, what this guy is saying that, okay, I got 5% of the weight, so I get potentially 5% of the computing power, but mm -hmm. since GPUs are not rigged for that, then I don't actually have, I just have a potential. They say that. Yeah, they say that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, it's <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> I was thinking that somehow the GPUs say, oh, I have to compute all units, uh, but somehow I was getting the benefits of not having to do all connections. Yeah, so you're saying even the, even the all even reducing the number of connections doesn't really gain you anything. No, right. That's right. still matrix matrix. matrix. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're the same boat as we are. So that's that's okay. And and so they're they're proposing these papers saying we're not really we're not really achieving these benefits because the way people are running them today doesn't. But the benefits are there. Right? The benefits, well, okay, but it's good because we're in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to be the only people out there saying, well, we can do better if. These are people saying, oh, we can do better if too. Right. But but what I think, sir, what I think is that. These papers are quite new. This is like 2019, 2019. This is like last week. Yeah, but wow. people have been, no, no, no. But the, the people have been in pruning for 30 years. Oh, so yeah. yeah. This pruning by magnitude has been around for 20 okay, years. Okay, yeah, right. But, but oh, maybe, it's, it's still recent research. Yeah, so maybe the community will, I don't know, move a little bit more towards that. And, and when was this paper coming? 
This is 2018, I think. So this, so this one is older than the one you just talked about here. Yeah. I don't feel around the but, 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 No, the pruning is, yeah, yeah. It's conceptually, yeah. I feel the background. The pruning has been, been done for yeah, 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 yeah. a long time. I think like um, in the 90s, something like that. It was around the, yeah. the first nips of it. All right. Um, you know, uh, it would be, I think, a, a, you know, a dramatic thing of some sort. Uh, I'm just, I was thinking about the issue of the GPUs and so on, and that's a problem for us. But you might be able to turn it into a benefit in some sense if you could say, um, you know, here are these new architectures, we're one of them, uh, and it has these benefits of continuous learning or robustness or, you know, whatever. And, um, um, and they don't really get, you don't really get that benefit if you run on a GPU, but if we now run them on, let's say, you know, the FPGA or the, you know, uh, the Xilinx type of board, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you could say, whatever. whatever, all of a sudden you could say, um, you could show equivalent performance or slightly better on any problem. It would just, it would be like, hey, maybe GPUs aren't the only way of doing this, mm -hmm. you know, that would be a, um, not be sort of a dramatic result, like mm -hmm. you know, by by abandoning GPUs and using these other architectures, now we enable these benefits. Uh, and not that the world's going to follow us in that regard, but it you sort of open a crack there, and you sort of like you sort of like say, hey, you know what? Yeah, Maybe this isn't the future. You know, the future is a different architecture. Yeah, I don't know if that's possible. Or not. It is possible. Yeah. That's uh, well, we can take it offline, but I'm, I don't. I don't. I just don't. I mean, I don't know. Well, well, I talked about it last week. Yeah, but I still know how hard it is to really. I mean, because there's thousands of people probably trying to run these networks on GPUs, and you got huge companies, you know. Yeah, but it all comes down to a very simple, you know, computation that has to be optimized. It's it's pretty straightforward. It's sort of like we're hoping a cortical I/O does, right? Um, with Xilinx, you know, if we could do something similar, not doing their networks, but doing these networks, but but saying highly pruned networks. I, I don't know if this is possible, but if it is. Highly crude networks actually perform better on these architectures, uh, and they're better overall. You know, a company like Xilinx would be thrilled. You know, or Intel or any of those people. Um, yeah. Because uh, they're all sitting around just quaking on boots and video. <laughs> and it's like, uh, we throw on fair efforts. Efforts is not like not fair, but it's less energy, less power, faster. Yeah. 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 Way it, it should be dramatic. But yeah, but you realize there's this huge pent up. Uh, energy demand money for the people who want to compete against NVIDIA. Mm, yeah. Uh, I think it even more excited working with us if we could show these kind of networks performing better for some reason. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we could say in the in a kind of a quick setting, but yeah, there's, there's oh, a lot of um a long stuff yeah, there's, there's a lot of kind of interest and pent up. I think in general with the GPU is like a behemoth in the in, in yeah. the oh, I know, I know. and there's all of these other companies that are trying to do like non-GPU type architectures that are yeah. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to, to, but they're all trying to do it with dense. I'm not getting that far. That's one of these. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, um, but uh, the, I think the other the other question I had here was when they did convolutional. It's a very minor question, actually. When they were doing convolutional, networks, it's only in the fully connected. It's only in the fully connected. Yeah. So they didn't do this yet. No. And we are doing so, only on the convolutional, not on the fully connected. No, no, no. We're doing both. We're doing both. Okay. Yeah. 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 They're doing only the fully but they are actually trying on three different models, so it's RDM, MMP, and uh, CNNs. So on CNNs, they're only using fully connected, yeah. but on MMP, it's on everything RDM as well. Yeah. So yeah, they, well, could, they could do a convolution and get I don't know why they didn't do it. Yeah. I guess it's just time. I, I think they, the CNN part's like small, so I think they focus a lot on RDMs, but that's what they're previous papers about. Oh, and right. then they did MNP, which is quite easy. And they're working with physics data, so right, MNPs right. are more sort of switch to that. And then they just tried CNN and like at the end. So yeah. it's a small part of the paper. So. OK. Cool. That's that whole paper. That's the whole paper. That's, 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 <laughs> that's why I wanted to keep the whole thing. Like, I, I, I started reading that paper, and I was getting lost yeah. really quickly. No, I, I like this kind of journal stuff. We just get to the essence of it. Yeah, no, that was great. And, uh, no, this is really, ago. really great for you. I didn't know any of this stuff, really. Um, it's super, as well as really clear. Yeah, somewhere in here they say, oh, we're directly in 
inspired by the brain. Yeah, yeah in the, the first in the introduction. The first part, yeah, yeah, somewhere. Well, you know, a lot of people say that. The question is, you know, what level of inspiration are they looking at? Uh, here, it, it, it talks in the beginning. Biological neural networks have been demonstrated to have a sparse rather than dense topology. And I also hold other important properties that are instrumental to learning efficiency. Uh, so, he, and he, he gives a lot of reference of brain lag and spar. And, all mm -hmm. that. and I, I also like the reference. Oh, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. That's really good. What is it? Okay. Are, are we stopped now? Are you stopped? All right, you guys hear me? Whoops, I should be showing my email. Um, iPad, I don't know. Which camera do I want? Okay, quick recap of that meeting. You want to see the robot? I'll, I'll show you the robot another time. A quick quick recap of that meeting. What you saw there was a um, a review of the paper that I linked in in chat, <laughs> um, and in a couple other papers that were linked from that. But basically, uh, other techniques for applying sparsity to deep learning networks. There's sort of two. Th this one, the way we did it in um, how could we be so dense was uh, by sort of initially pruning connections and basically establishing potential pools and then keeping them, keeping those weights that same way the whole time. Um, hold on. The, uh, that's weird, they're not supposed to cut that. I'm still struggling with my setup. Uh, but what this paper, as far as I can tell, is it, uh, it sort of applies applies that weight sparsity at, at every time step, or could, could be applying it at every time step. Um, and so that's uh, definitely something we could do because if we're if we're taking out the weakest the weakest uh, connections, we want to also establish the new connections. And instead of doing them randomly like this paper does, let's do it in a smart way. So I think that's sort of the direction that um, we want to go, and that's why this paper was presented at the research meeting. Um, now